Hi, my name is Garai Berti. I'm a chartered professional accountant serving clients located throughout the GTA in Ontario, Canada. In today's video, I'm going to explain what tax concepts you should be aware about when selling or buying a business in Canada from a tax perspective. Let's get started. There are two methods in which you can sell or purchase a business in Canada. Each has its own unique advantages and disadvantages to both the seller and the buyer. It's important the seller and buyer individually have separate tax accountants representing them to ensure they get a fair agreement from a tax perspective. The first method is to sell or purchase the shares of a small business corporation in Canada. Let's look at it from both the buyer and seller perspective. A seller would prefer this method as it can enable the seller to obtain the lifetime capital gains exemption of $800,000 on the disposition of qualified small business shares. Imagine getting $800,000 fully exempt from taxes. Any seller would like this approach. Since you will be selling the corporation shares, once the shares are sold, the corporation will now belong to the purchaser. As a result, you will not incur any dissolution, wind-up, or accounting fees for the company any longer. It can be difficult for a seller sometimes, based on their industry, to find a buyer who is willing to buy their shares, thus making this approach not realistically feasible. To get the full tax benefits of selling your shares, you need to plan ahead at least two years in advance. Make sure you let your tax accountant know when the thought of selling your business starts arising often. Now let's turn over and look at it from the buyer's perspective. Most of the time, a seller will offer a lower purchase price if the buyer will be willing to purchase the shares of the corporation. The reason for this is the tax savings for the seller as previously explained. Depending on the variables, this can give you extra leverage from a bargaining perspective to obtain a lower purchase price. When you purchase the shares of the seller, the shares along with the corporation become yours. This includes every detail from employees to data files, etc. One of the drawbacks of this approach for the buyer is that although you're paying a lot of money for the purchase of this business, you can only depreciate the remaining asset balances carried on from the seller. This is called undepreciated capital cost allowance. For a buyer, your liability increases because along with the shares of the corporation, you take on the history of the corporation. Imagine an unhappy employee from the past who files a lawsuit or a tax compliance issue. A buyer really has to make sure strong due diligence procedures are performed to help minimize liability exposure. For example, review the history of the tax filings, etc. Both a lawyer and a tax accountant can help assist in this. The second method is to sell or purchase the assets of a business corporation in Canada. In this approach, the main objective is to have the buyer and seller mutually agree on a fair settlement of the allocation of the purchase price to different assets. 
it's very important you have a tax accountant representing you separately from the other party due to the tax complexity in the treatments. Again, let's look at it from both the buyer and seller perspective. For the seller, compared to the first approach, more tax will be paid since you cannot use the lifetime capital gains exemption. However, keep in mind that even when a corporation incurs a capital gain, only 50% is taxable. The other 50% is tax-free. This approach can allow the seller to quickly sell the business and at its true value without offering any discount compared to the other approach. As a seller, you don't want to allocate amounts exceeding your undepreciated capital cost on assets being sold. The reason for this is that you do not want to trigger recapture. Recapture will create additional taxable income for your corporation. The seller's goal is to allocate the bulk of the price to goodwill since only 50% of it is taxable and at a low rate currently. However, this rule is subject to change in the new budget proposed whereby they will be taxed at a higher rate just like passive income. The formula for goodwill is a selling price minus amounts allocated to assets. This approach helps minimize liability exposure for the buyer since only assets are being purchased and usually in a newly incorporated company. The seller will have the full ownership rights and duties of the corporation the assets were purchased from. For a buyer, allocating as much as possible of the purchase price to assets is most beneficial. This is because the assets can be depreciated for tax purposes to help minimize taxes and get the full benefit of the large amount of money paid to purchase the business. Allocating too much of the purchase price to goodwill is not advantageous for the buyer because only 75% of it can be depreciated and at a very low rate. It proves inefficient to minimize taxes. The rules for the tax treatment of eligible capital property are subject to change under the current proposed budget. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're either planning or are in the process of selling or buying a business in Canada, I encourage you to reach out to me to assist you. I would also encourage you to visit our website at birdie.ca where you can schedule a free consultation, ask a question on our tax forum, read our blogs for tax tips. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe for more tax tip videos on the way. Thanks for watching.